Graduation ceremonies, like this one at the University of Arkansas, are held at thousands of colleges around the country each year. Among these graduates are some who face a special challenge. This is a story of two of those students who, with the help of their families and their schools, are finding a way. University of Arkansas is close to my home, Carrollton, Texas, and it's also far enough away to kind of have that college experience. I really like the campus. It's a beautiful campus, and walking around outside when the weather is nice is always really fun. I am a part of the swim club. I started freshman year in the fall and we practice four times a week. It's an easy practice, but it's part swim club, part social life, so it's been fun. After like a long day of studying or classes, it's nice to take the time to, okay, now it's time to stop and go to swim club and see my friends and hang out and, you know, swim and have a little release, I guess. Definitely doing some of these activities I might get a little overwhelmed. I am Bryn Smirnoff. I'm a sophomore at the University of Arkansas and I have dyslexia. Dyslexia is a learning disability that impairs a person's ability to read and retain information. Due to this, many with dyslexia struggle in the academic environment. Individuals with dyslexia say it is often a challenge to sit through a lengthy lecture and remember and apply the information learned from the lecture. It is difficult to focus on the professor and take notes in class. Reading can be tricky as well. Many people with dyslexia transpose characters, add words to sentences, frequently lose their place, and face difficulty with retention of the material. For Bren, studying can be a daily struggle. Reading is um, really hard for me. It takes me a very long time. And spelling is also really, really difficult for me. I was first diagnosed with dyslexia in second grade. And my dad has dyslexia, so he recognized um, some of the tendencies in me that he had when he was a kid. My parents tell me that in elementary school, when we were first learning to read, I really rejected it. I didn't want to sit down and learn to read with the little books that we had to bring home. Bren isn't alone. She is part of a large group. One in five college students have some form of learning disability, and dyslexia is the most common. Even after being diagnosed with dyslexia, many still struggle with feeling different and are embarrassed that they have a learning disability, and some are afraid of being called on in class. In high school, I was very self-conscious about having a learning disability. I didn't talk about it, I didn't tell anybody, and I would sit in class very nervous, afraid of being called on to read out loud or answer a question. My high school didn't have any classes for people with learning disabilities. My mom was a big support system for me. She helped me a lot with assignments, proofreading, essays. So without her, it would have been very difficult. If we had reading assignments that you know were very lengthy, she would actually sit down and read it out loud to me so that I could comprehend what was going on instead of worrying about misreading a word or not understanding a word. My freshman year of high school, we were assigned to read Charles Dickens' Great Expectations. I absolutely loved this story, but I didn't read a single word of it by myself. My mom read the whole book out loud to me. Every night we'd sit down and she would, you know, read the assigned chapter and help talk me through what was going on just because the language is so different and a little bit harder for me to 
kind of grasp by myself. It's interesting though because my mom was always such a big help to me, like, like as a tutor figure. But like my dad never was able to help me with homework or stuff like that. He's a neuropsychologist, so I saw how hard he had to work to get to where he is today, and that was always really inspiring to me. He, like always telling me like I could do it too, and you got to put down the work to get the results. Bryn says her father was her hero, and continues to be inspired by his ability to rise above his dyslexia and become a doctor. This passion to overcome his learning disability drove Bryn to work hard in high school and make it to the University of Arkansas. I did fairly well in high school, and that was because I had my mom right there to help me read or check my assignments and essays, and I wanted to be able to do just as well or even better in college, but there was that fear that I wouldn't have my kind of built-in tutor with me day to day. During her freshman orientation week, Brynn and her parents attended a fair of clubs and services on campus. In the back of the room, she found a booth for the Center for Educational Access. The Center for Educational Access, or the CEA, is an office that works with students with disabilities here at the University of Arkansas to provide services such as accommodations, and those services may include note-taking services, test uh, accommodations. But we provide a myriad of services and programs for students with disabilities. The CEA at the University of Arkansas caters to students who have a wide spectrum of disabilities. Hi, Brian. I'm Heidi. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Ranging from mental to physical okay. and learning we'll disabilities. The, the CEA requires documentation of a disability okay. to access its services. Talk about alternative formats of Once a student has submitted the paperwork, he or she meets with a staff member to figure out what types of accommodations are the most beneficial for the student. What you would want to do is set up... I tell students they have every right to flunk or pass. My job is to help them figure out how to tear down the barriers and get those accommodations in place to tear down the barriers. From there, they have the struggles that every other student has. Some of the accommodations the center provides are audio textbooks and note takers. Students often get more time to take tests outside of the classroom in an environment that is free from distractions. Students are also allowed to record lectures and use their computers in class. I'm teaching. I'm going to be meeting. This assistance is included in the campus student fee. There is no additional cost to students to use the CEA services. With students with learning disabilities, initially when they come in, we consider it to be an interactive process where we're working with them to understand their strengths in addition to their limitations. We look at accommodations and how those will best eliminate any barriers that they may have. So we definitely try to personalize it to the individual student. I'll make contact with your professor about um, making the new announcement okay. and, for, and um, identifying a note taker. Due to the heavy workload that is placed on students in the college environment, Bryn often takes longer to complete her assignments. This can affect a student's performance in college, but the CEA provides accommodations to level the playing field. This helps break down barriers of a learning disability and to provide students with the confidence to do well in class, become successful academically, and ultimately graduate. Through Brent's meeting with the CEA staff member, she chose several accommodations that help her break down barriers that dyslexia presents. She uses lecture recordings and class note takers. This helps fill in the gaps that may have been missed during class. She also uses the CEA testing center. For students with dyslexia, taking a test in the classroom can be stressful, intimidating, and distracting. The testing center provides a quiet environment that frees the student from stress. The professors are really good about taking the accommodations into consideration 
and working with other students to make sure we are able to use the accommodations that we have. Federal legislation requires that institutions of higher learning provide these accommodations. The Rehabilitation Act of 1973 and the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990 require that higher education institutions do not discriminate on the basis of disability, including learning disabilities. All public colleges in the United States are required to have accommodations available for students with disabilities. The CEA meets these federal standards. There are fee-based programs at public and private colleges that go beyond the federal standards and provide more comprehensive programs. One such program exists at the University of the Ozarks in Clarksville, Arkansas, the Jones Learning Center. The Jones Learning Center is the most comprehensive program at a traditional four-year college in the country. There are a couple of colleges specifically for students with learning disabilities. They only take students with learning disabilities. Other than that, we are the most comprehensive program. Our program, by being a comprehensive program, is more than is required by law. The University of the Ozarks is a small school with an enrollment of less than 1,000. Due to its small size and with the JLC, there are opportunities to serve students with learning disabilities on a one-to-one -one basis. The Jones Learning Center provides an immersive environment for students to grow and thrive. We're able to take that and break it down into much smaller pieces that we provide for our students. The one to, to four, four to four point five, is really important for our students that they've got that individual time every day, a set time every day. Uh, the first column is duties. Kyle Eberhart is a senior from Franklin, Massachusetts. Would be like, uh, what At the U of O, he practically lives in the JLC. He spends his time studying, working with staff, tutors, and even hanging out with friends. I have ADD. Uh, in addition to that, I also have a nonverbal learning disability that encompasses executive functioning issues, slow processing speed, and visual-spatial issues. Basically, it's a problem with step-by-step -step reasoning, so I can see the beginning of a problem and the end of the problem, but I can't really figure out how to get between the two. Kyle's learning disabilities affect him every day in his academics whether he's writing, learning math, or studying science. Attention Deficit Disorder is a neural behavioral disorder that interferes with the individual's ability to stay on task. Kyle says it's difficult for him to concentrate in class or on an assignment. It is also hard for him to stay focused on a project. I was spending abnormally long hours, uh, late into the night, 11, 10, 11 o'clock doing homework every night, uh, reading math. Or My parents had me diagnosed when I was a lot younger, I think second grade. We only thought that I had ADD at that point. We had always known that there was something off, but they couldn't really put words to it and they really just thought uh, that I wasn't putting in the type of effort that I could have been. Probably the biggest struggle for me was uh, with my family actually because they didn't understand my issues and I didn't understand my issues. I wasn't able to accurately communicate the problems I was having and that was having an effect on my family life. And that caused a lot of resentment, I think, towards my parents um, for a long, long, long time. We'd be fighting constantly, uh, every night, sometimes twice a night, over things that I couldn't control. Um, and that would be on top of my homework. So it was an added stressor. Uh, and everything, everything kind of came to a head uh, my sophomore year because they, they thought because I was being so lazy that I wasn't necessarily, they 
they off, they offered multiple times like you know uh, college might not be uh, it is, do you want to go to college and I always said yes because that that is exactly what I want to do and they're like you got to put in the effort you got to be able to go to these colleges you got you have to get these good grades A's and B's all all the way through and I I said I know I'm trying and they didn't necessarily understand that I actually was putting in the effort that they thought I wasn't. So there was a disconnect, I think. And it was only later, I think, the end of my sophomore year when we went to get me retested for the uh, pre-SATs to get extended time on them, that we discovered I had the executive functioning issues, that I had the visual spatial issues, that I had the slow processing speed. We had always known that there was something off, but they couldn't really put words to it. Because of this diagnosis, Kyle was able to get the accommodations he needed. This led to the fulfillment of his dream to go to college. He even visited nine colleges, all of which had good programs for students with learning disabilities. However, he finally decided on the U of O. I spent literally a month long trip with my uh, mom going to all these colleges and the first place we stopped was here and this this school kind of connected with me I think. So that question is basically the same thing that uh, Hauserman and Kyle had came up. One of the reasons he feels successful is because of his relationship with professors. Is that the threshold Having that respect from professor to student gives Kyle the confidence he needs to succeed. Has it one professor in particular, Dr. Stuart Dipple, developed a rapport with Kyle from the beginning. Dr. Dipple is interesting in that he treats everybody the same. He develops a rapport with the students very early on, I think, and I think uh, being able to have that accountability for him to call you out and say, look, what are you doing? I, I think that's amazing. This respect and accountability led to a positive student-professor relationship that allowed Kyle to flourish in his chosen major of political science. Well, Kyle is a better student now than he was when he first came, and I don't know what Kyle's learning disability is. He is one of those students from the Learning Center that if they didn't tell you that they had a learning disability, you wouldn't know it. I think, as with many people, when he first came here, he didn't have the academic discipline uh, to, to make him sit down and, 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 and do the work or put the time in to do the work that you have to do. Kyle's work is, uh, for the last year of my classes, has been consistently good. Uh, he comes to class prepared, more than able and willing to add to class discussion. So I would say he's become a very good student. Well, I think that the Learning Center does what they're supposed to do, and that is to get those students out into the mainstream of campus life. We uh, provide uh, academic support for students with learning disabilities, and I help students daily with mainly time management, and uh, because a lot of our students have executive functioning disabilities and ADHD, and they need that a lot of times to get them started. Now we saved that email, remember you like 14 yeah. hours? Debbie Carlton's primary role is to provide daily one-on-one -on -one academic support. She helps with dictation, general studying, and proctoring exams. Debbie is the person who is central to Kyle's life at the JLC. Coordinators like Debbie are one of the reasons why the program at the U of O is comprehensive. Beyond the one-on-one -on -one help, students at the JLC receive help from note takers, they get extended time for tests, they also have access to audio texts and tutors, as well as math and writing specialists. He's very easy to work with because he listens, 
He follows through with what you tell him uh, to do. He's, his disability is executive functioning ADHD. So he and I work together a lot with just time management and organization. But working with Kyle, it, is, there's no difficulty there because he's not resistant to suggestions or to learn. I think coming into the, the college environment and that one-on-one -on -one help just gives them that needed confidence at the beginning and there's a lot of guiding that first year, that first semester. But I think once they learn and have that little bit of confidence that, hey, you know, I can do this college stuff. Thank you. She will go above and beyond to help you in everything that you do, academically and otherwise. My coordinator helps me uh, keep on track, helps me keep organized, um, which certainly helps uh, over the past Two years or so, I've kind of learned to start doing that on my own, but I still like to have her as a backup because I do miss things. I do think the one-on-one -on -one relationship with my coordinator is the reason for my success. My coordinator has helped me immensely. I think I wouldn't be able to exceed, uh, succeed as well as I do without them. I really wouldn't. I always talk about the fact that when our students come in, I think of them as being surrounded by a circle of support. We're going to give them any support they might possibly need in the beginning. As they begin to become successful, we try to back off on that support a little bit, let them do more and more on their own. For some, that means that they transfer into the general program on campus. For some, that's when they graduate and they're able to go on without us. And that's our goal for them is to not need us anymore. The CEA has given Bryn the confidence she needs to strike out on her own academically. She is headed to a new place, ready to face a new challenge. I will be studying abroad in London for six weeks. I'm very excited. The college in London does offer accommodations through the exchange program, but I will not actually be requesting any accommodations for this trip. All the accommodations that I get here with the CEA have strengthened my abilities and given me the confidence to be able to study abroad and do it on my own without any extra help. I don't even really like to call it a disability because it is just a different way that our brains are, you know, wired and function. So I think changing my outlook on what dyslexia is for me helped me be more confident in talking about it, being open about it, and seeking help from the resources that I could find. Taking on the mindset of dyslexia having strengths definitely gave me more confidence in my academic abilities and my ability to come to college. This graduation is proving that I can do this uh, more than anything else. Kyle Allen Eberhardt, Franklin, Massachusetts, Bachelor of Science in Political Science, cum laude. I think my parents did an, as, be, as good of a job as they possibly could with a student with so many learning issues that they didn't necessarily understand. I'm very grateful for what they did and what they continue to do. I think I'm going to miss just being on campus every day. I think I'm going to miss my coordinator because she was a part of my everyday life for four years. You have always prepared me to go and do whatever it is I'm going to do next and then to go off and do your own thing and be truly self-sufficient. It's a challenge and it, admitting that to yourself and saying, okay, this is going to be a new chapter in my life with all new challenges, things that I've never had to do before. Um, that, that's inherently terrifying, but I'm more than equipped to meet those challenges and 
see how I do. The JLC in particular has set me up with a, a lot of life skills that certainly apply to studying, but it gave me the tools I think I need, specifically the political science major, to think critically, um, think outside the box, and I think I can bring that to any employer and be successful wherever I go. If you have a learning disability, it doesn't matter where you go. There will always be services there to help you. And it doesn't have to be an organized service like the Jones Learning Center. It can be as little as finding a group of friends who can help support you, finding people who would be willing to tutor you, whether they be friends or otherwise. It, it is about finding a support network that will support you academically, socially, or otherwise. That is the key to success.